I have three things on my tick list that are absolutely fundamentally required um, for you to be a good manager, regardless of your, of your shop size. And some of these will make you squirm, but just deal with it. <laughs> so the first one is the idea of an employee handbook. And there are some resources available in the US, and I'm assuming they are here, maybe you and I need to talk later, Brian, uh, where you can download a template and uh, as a PDF or a Word document and just put in your particulars, but having an employee handbook to cover policies, like what is, what is our process or our protocol if you're gonna be sick? You know, I don't want you sending me a text message five minutes after you're supposed to be here. You need to do A, B, and C. If you want to request vacation days, how do we go about it? What is our policy for dealing with irate customers? What is our policy for refunds? The more that you have in black and white, the easier it is for you to manage. They are already connected 24-7. And uh, the distribution of people, goods, energy, money, knowledge, uh, it's, all, it's all getting new dimensions now. I think our world is becoming more and more a peer-to-peer -peer society. And uh, the man in the white van is already uh, becoming our only connection to the real world. And uh, in a few years, the white van will have autopilot. British flowers do last well. British flowers are as comparable on the whole to imported flowers. I know because I test things myself, I trial things at home, and it's amazing. Just the softest things sometimes, if they're treated right, if they're conditioned right beforehand with products like Chrysler and handled correctly, then they will last. Does it matter that everything doesn't last? But is that an educational thing then? Is it not our role to educate these customers? I'm absolutely bored sick with that 10 day guarantee. It sends me wild. Why do we have to offer a 10 day guarantee like the supermarkets do on flowers? Yeah, we all know it, chrysanthemums, carnations, lilies, will last 10 days. Yeah, but we're competing with the supermarkets, they'll be after. But that's where British can come in. You know, something like a bunch of sweet peas is not gonna last 10 days. So I thought it would be a good idea if when we did our forecast, we could put one of these 10 day guarantees on it. Okay. <laughs> guarantees be right for 10 days. That's, a, that's the one thing I'm going to take back from your, uh, from your comments. Now that uh, diagram there, that chart, uh, shows you the current forecast of the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee about the main measure of the economy, what we call GDP, the thing that summarises how well the economy as a whole is doing. And uh, you'll see that our forecast is the black line in the middle, which shows growth slowing a little bit uh, as, as, as we go. So that beyond the black line, we've got a deep green bit. And our forecast is that the most likely outcome is that growth will be somewhere in the middle of that deep green bit, in other words, a, a slight slowing down. But given that no forecast can ever be at all uh, certain, that green bit is supposed to show you what we think 90% of the outcomes, what would cover 90% of the outcomes. So you can see that where there's a 10% possibility that growth could be as high as 5%, and there's a 10% possibility that we could go back into, into recession. And I do think the outlook at the moment is particularly uncertain because we can't really um, tell with any uh, confidence how the economy will react to actual Brexit or the process of negotiation towards Brexit as we go forward. Now the sharp eye amongst you will notice that this green fuzziness goes backwards as well over all the data that we've already had. And this is the really nice thing about economics, even the past is uncertain. And uh, <laughs> this is actually, I see this catchy on in other areas as well. So um, in the, um, what is it, the, the Olympic heptathlon, you know, you think in 2007 that you were second and then later in time you find you were first. <laughs> so it's not just economics that has this, has this problem.
But the same <laughs> principles apply, really, whatever it is that you are putting in your window, how you put it together. You have, on average, the customer has, on average, two seconds as they're passing your shop to make a note of who you are, what you do, and whether they are going to come in or not. You always ask yourself when you're considering publishing something, whether it's on your Facebook or your Instagram or your other channels. Let's look good at first glance. Is it something that is thought-provoking, eye-catching within the first few seconds, similar to the displays, window displays? Uh, a lot of the same principles apply. You get two seconds of somebody's attention, whether it's while they're walking down your street or whether they're scrolling through their timeline, and you have to catch that attention and do something effective with it. Last year, Ava and I got the opportunity, and we were given the opportunity by the support of the BFA, Florid, Florismart, Geisel, to actually go into the UK market. We met about 100 florists in the regional meetings last year, and we did 11 <coughs> in-depth interviews uh, with florists in their shops, where we found out that none of you have a heater in the shop. So we had very gold feet, <laughs> and a lot of them, we asked the question is, what do you do with sustainability? And the first answer they gave us, nothing, because no one is asking for it. That's how we started off. We had interviews between two and three hours. We had 70, que 70, 70 questions asked, and at the end they said, listen, we have to do something with it. We have to move forward. And that's where our idea came from, to create a tool to help florists to go towards that situation where the millennials and the online system and the sustainability. Seventeen is moving to a new venue. Uh, we've sort of outgrown the Chester Grange and we're actually moving to the Hilton Hotel in the AC. It's a bigger venue, and we're trying an experiment. Whether it's going to work, I hope it doesn't. It might bankrupt the association. But we're, <laughs> better not. <laughs> better not. <laughs> but we're actually going to make the entrance to Florex free. So hopefully that's going to increase the number of florists, whereas you want to say they're going to get in their cars and drive to the NC to see all the trade stands. And hopefully that will be good for the traders in all the trade stand people as well, the fact that we can encourage more florists to come. So it's going to actually be free to go into the ADC to see all the trade stands, but if you want to see a demonstration, then you have to pay. Your activities that's come to our attention that you have, without Tesco's permission or authorization, registered the name of tescoflorist.com, which incorporates the mark Tesco, the domain name. Yeah, right, fine. Alternatively, the domain name is similar to our registered and unregistered trademarks and is being used to supply identical or similar services to the services covered by our trademark registrations. This will, and I've highlighted this in red, or at least is likely to confuse or mislead the public to believe mistakenly that you are associated with endorsed by or otherwise connected to us, our business or our brand. I thought, you can get lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, we wrote a letter back, well, me and Frank did, and I've just highlighted a few things here. Our sole purpose in obtaining the domain name was to protect the interests of thousands of small independent florists. We're not interested in their name, we're only interested in ours. It is our contention that the use of the word florist is similarly likely to confuse or mislead the public into believing that you are skilled in the art. <laughs> so, I, it does take a huge amount of people to actually help um, run this organisation which is really really starting to grow. Um, I think you can see that it's really starting to grow, that the uh, membership is 
really starting to help. Um, but most of all, uh, this is your organisation. We're in this together and this is the Florist Fight Back. Thank you.